Only 5.3% of children globally are diagnosed with ADHD. This is such a tiny number. Certainly, I don't really have to think about it or how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom. Actually, 5.3% is a little over one child in every primary classroom. Hmm. In BC, where I live, 5.3% means that approximately 1.16 children out of the 22 children in my grade one, two class will be diagnosed with ADHD. Well, honestly, that sounds pretty reasonable, actually. Not such a big deal until you start to think about it. Join me for today's topic, how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom. Hi there, teachers. Marian Busfield here from Engaging Curiosity to empower you to take charge in the classroom by supporting you with evidence-based classroom management strategies and resources. Classroom management is often overwhelming at the beginning, but with the right strategies and resources, you will master the classroom behavior and pave the way for dynamic instruction. I am a faith-led, married, mother of two, grandmother to one, outdoor enthusiast, and retired teacher. My passion is to share what I know about teaching to support this wonderful new generation of teachers. Videos will include topics on my five pillars of classroom management, which are building classroom community, classroom expectations, differentiation and in instruction, social emotional learning, and classroom organization. Look down below and find the link to download my free classroom management checklist. Inside the checklist, you will find my five pillars of classroom management broken down into steps you can take one at a time. A goal setting page is included to help you get organized and prioritized with the needs for your unique classroom. Download the checklist now and set your goals today. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today. When Let's I quoted you the number 5.3%, which comes from an article from the article, a review of Canadian diagnosed ADHD prevalence and incidence estimates published in the past decade. Oof. Link down below. That number is only indicating the children already diagnosed with ADHD. That number does not reflect many, many factors. 5.3% is a global average. What's the average where I live? Is ADHD a globally accepted diagnosis? The article Hyperactive Around the World, the history of ADHD and global perspectives suggests there are some divisions in the acceptance of ADHD. Are diagnostic tools for ADHD consistent globally? Are diagnosticians for ADHD available globally? Are parents choosing to have their children diagnosed or not? Does 5.3% reflect an accurate number of grade one students versus grade eight students? I don't believe we really know how many students have ADHD. And later on, I will share some other factors that complicate accepting number, the number 5.3%. Regardless of the accuracy or inaccuracy of that number, having even one child with ADHD in the classroom can have a significant impact on the classroom. Clearly, teachers need to figure out how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom, regardless of whether or not the student is diagnosed. First steps first. Step one will be to complete a student ADHD assessment to know how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom. But ADHD is actually a medical diagnosis. We as teachers cannot determine on our own that a student has ADHD. However, when we see ADHD-like traits in our students, we still do need to have classroom management strategies that both support that student in a way that allows us to teach all of the students. So we can share what we see with parents, more on that in my blog and video, how to be identifying students with ADHD in primary, which is linked below. But the core symptoms of ADHD for now are a hard time focusing, reacting without thinking, restlessness or a hard time sitting still. In some cases, girls may be more daydreamy than boys. However, ADHD has multiple symptoms that overlap with other medical and mental health conditions. We as teachers are not trained to tease apart those symptoms and diagnose mental health conditions. In my own situation, I was misdiagnosed by my doctor. When I returned with similar concerns six years later, she was really uncertain and sent me to a specialist. Like I said, diagnoses are for doctors only, please. And even then, ask for a second opinion if you think it is required. That would be more as a parent than as a teacher, I might add. With or without a student having a diagnosis, you may believe that you are still likely to be managing ADHD in school with at least one student. So what now? First, let's validate that feeling. Based on the stats and symptoms I shared above, you're probably right. You probably are already managing ADHD in school. You can't diagnose, but there is no harm implementing classroom management in a way that supports those students and you. 
because, and this is where the rubber hits the road, even if you are not managing ADHD in school, you still need to find ways to manage and teach that student or those students. A diagnosis or a lack of a diagnosis did not change whether or not that student is in your class or the student's impact on your classroom management style. However, the first step in how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom is to make certain parents are aware of your concerns. Now, I talk more about the early steps of identifying a student with ADHD and informing parents of your concerns in my blog post, How to Be Identifying Students with ADHD in Primary. And again, you can find the link for that below. However, in short, in order to be certain, your next step is to talk to the parents so that they can hopefully take the appropriate next step. Before I continue, a reminder to use the link down below to download the free classroom management checklist. Once you have shared your email address, you will receive links to my weekly email with classroom tips and links to my blog and video. To prepare, you may want to talk to your learning support team about your concerns or use some of the resources I shared in my blog post, how to be identifying students with ADHD in primary, and the links for many of those resources are again down below. Then having shared your concerns with parents, it is time to get on with managing ADHD in the classroom. Fortunately for us, there was a fantastic student with ADHD case study done in the 1980s. This student with ADHD case study was done by an organization called Raising Healthy Children, RHC, and it was done from 1985 to 21, 2024. 2014, sorry. I find it incredibly encouraging that the follow-up studies and research on ADHD student behavior also shows that children's of participants showed improvement. RHC also provided a blueprint for supporting students with ADHD in schools. What strategies were recommended for how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom? The strategies RHC provided were elementary school teachers received classroom management and instruction strategies. Parents were provided with skills to promote opportunities for children's active involvement in the classroom and family. The child was provided with social and emotional skills training. I am delighted when I see this list. They start by saying classroom management is impactful. And when I look at RHC, and what they implemented, I see a close alignment with my pillars of classroom management. That delights me because from personal experience, I know it works and I know it's effective. Woot! What makes me delighted to continue to share these strategies with you, but I digress. Nothing in the RHC document indicates that students were medicated. That is not to say that none of these children received medication, but it does say that medication is something that is beyond our control. I am not anti-medication. I am all about what is within our control. Classroom management is within our control. And I will dig into that more in the next blog post, how to add inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom. But meanwhile, some of the RHC recommendations are absolutely beyond of the scope of my entire blog. Never mind this post or your ability to implement. And those things are out of our control. But there are a number of things that are within your control that will make a huge difference in the life of your students. RHC's goal was to decrease the impact of the student in the classroom by providing support to the family. And topics included proactive classroom management, cooperative learning methods, strategies to enhance student motivation, student involvement and participation. Okay, and reading strategies, interpersonal problem solving skills. Wow, that's a lot. But where can you get started with how to manage the ADHD behavior in the classroom? I have included the RHC recommendations again below, and you can find links below to my earlier blog posts which elaborate on these strategies. Hopefully, these blog posts will give you some specifics on how to get started, and of course, the videos too. Take your pick. And future blog posts and videos in this series will address these topics. Proactive classroom management, greeting students at the door, establish, maintain, and restore relationships, use reminders and cues, optimize classroom seating, give behavior specific praise, set clear expectations, actively supervise, be consistent in applying rules, uh, use cooperative learning methods, and uh, use strategies to enhance student motivation, encourage student involvement and participation, teach reading strategies and interpersonal problem solving skills. All of these things, many of them you're already doing and hopefully you can take the next step to the next part. 
The last word for now on how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom, there is no doubt that we are managing ADHD in school. The question from the research mentioned at the beginning of this blog post is not whether or not ADHD is in the schools, it is whether or not we are re under reporting the prevalence of ADHD in students. The good news is that the strategies for supporting students with ADHD, ADHD are just sound strategies for classroom management. The freedom that comes with this understanding is that much of what we need to do as so far as supporting students with ADHD in the classroom, we can do for the whole class. This approach makes inclusiveness a natural practice within the classroom as we implement a universal design for learning approach. You are, are already managing ADHD in school. Upcoming blog posts and videos in this series will address strategies, resources, activities, and tools for how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom. I hope you join me there. Meanwhile, you've got this. I appreciate your sharing your time with me today, and I hope to see you soon. Bye now. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today, and I hope you join me again soon. Take steps to calm the classroom chaos one step at a time. Please remember to use the link down below to uh, my free classroom management checklist. See you soon.